I'm Bruce Owen, and I'm one of the legislature reporters for the Winnipeg Free Press. And with me is my comrade, Larry Cush. And we're going to be talking for a few minutes about the NDP leadership race this weekend and how we got here. And how we got here happened back in mid-October when we learned Premier Selinger was not going on a trade mission to China. Instead, he sent his agriculture minister, Ron Kostichin. We started asking, okay, why isn't the Premier going to China? And of course, at that time, there was all the takeover of the Genpeg generating station in northern Manitoba. Um, and we thought, because the Premier was not going to China and that he was staying behind to deal with this issue at the Genpeg generating station in Cross Lake or near Cross Lake, um, that it was a more serious takeover protest than we initially thought. Um, we thought, okay, because the Premier was staying behind, this could be Manitoba's version of the Oka crisis in Quebec a number of years ago. So we started asking questions. Mm -hmm. It only took us a few days, but we soon found out that the Premier was staying behind not because of the Genpeg generating station takeover, but because of something much more serious facing his leadership. A takeover or a, uh, a revolt simmering in within his own caucus. Yes. And, uh, so uh, we, we kept pursuing this and within a few days, uh, members uh, of uh, stories appearing in our paper, um, cabinet ministers began speaking on the record about their uh, about their uh, concerns about the leadership and so it, it all it snowballed from there yes so then we had a, a situation within weeks that there's a leadership uh, campaign on and uh, and and it's been going on now for 11 weeks and uh, we are very close now to finding out a new leader a new premier perhaps uh, for the province of Manitoba well, we, 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 again, this has been going, you mentioned that this is probably one of the longer leadership races that we've seen, right. 11 weeks, normally there's only a short campaign, yep. uh, but now this is, is, it's seemingly taken on a life of its own, it's uh, certainly paralyzed the government, the government will say, oh no, 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 it's business as usual, but we know these hallways have been eerily quiet yes. over the past th yes. three months. Um, oh, and what's going to happen, Larry? Okay, so, uh, well, that's a $64 question, and we really don't know who is going to be elected leader. Um, there are three uh, candidates, uh, just as there were in 2009 when Selinger was chosen leader at, upon the departure of Gary Dewar. We have uh, Selinger himself, uh, who is fighting for his leadership. Uh, we have uh, Steve Ashton, who uh, took him on last time. In 2009, and, yeah. And then we have uh, Teresa Oswald, who uh, will siphon off a lot of the support Greg Selinger had last time. Well, uh, Teresa is being one of the, obviously, one of the five ministers who questioned and obviously you know, mutinied mm -hmm. uh, on uh, Selinger's uh, leadership. Um, one of the questions that I've always wondered, obviously, and it's a big issue, obviously, in this campaign, is the anger within the NDP over, you know, Oswald and the other four uh, coming out and breaking cabinet solidarity and questioning mm -hmm. the leadership. Well, how is that going to play into this weekend's vote? I, I think that's uh, a big factor in the vote. Um, we know that uh, Teresa Oswald has a fair bit of support, but we also know that within uh, the NDP there are a lot of people who can't bring themselves to supporting someone who spoke out publicly against the leader. Um, she probably would have had a lot more support if uh, the Premier had just resigned um, and when he saw the writing on the wall, so to speak, uh, and this hadn't been made public. But when it did, a lot of people got very angry. They, did, they thought that uh, Premier Selinger deserved to stay uh, until he was ready to leave, that he had earned that. Um, but, uh, but now we're... Um, so it adds a different dynamic and it, and it also makes you wonder how things are going to play out at the convention if it goes to a second vote. We believe it will go oh. to a second vote. Yep. We think that um, after 
uh, the delegate selection meetings and the youth vote are in. The three are pretty much uh, tied. Uh, they have pretty much equal uh, support. So um, what happens on second ballot? One of them will have to drop off. We don't, uh, we don't know who that might be. We think maybe Steve Ashton has enough initial support that he will survive that first uh, ballot. And then what you've got is uh, a fight between the Gang of Five and the Premier and his supporters for, to, for that other spot. And whoever survives that um, has probably a good chance against uh, Mr. Ashton. Right. And whoever wins obviously becomes the Premier of Manitoba. We either Premier Salinger stays on as a leader or someone else takes that office down the hallway. But it's not, it's very, only for a year. Um, while these his select number of delegates get a chance to vote on who the next leader of the NDP should be, um, Manitobans will get that chance to decide who the leader of the NDP should be, who the leader of the province should be uh, in April of 2016. That's when Manitobans will finally get a say in all of this.